I'm almost all the way through my second trimester, expecting baby number three come end of June. And with each pregnancy, I've learned a little bit more about which things are essential, which things you do not want to skip, and which things just really aren't that important at all. So I'm gonna be sharing my best second trimester tips with all of you today. Hey everybody, I'm Dr. Nicole. I'm a pelvic floor specialist. I'm also, as I already said, expecting baby number three, and I already have two little boys at home. And some of the things that I am prioritizing this pregnancy are a little bit different than the things that I thought I needed to do with my first pregnancy. One of the things I've done all three of my pregnancies that I would not change is that I started using collagen in the second trimester. Now, I probably could have started this in the first trimester. Collagen is just a really good thing. There's a lot of protein in it, which is good nutritionally. Also, the collagen is really good for skin, hair, nails, all that sort of thing. But most of all, I'm concerned about skin because I'm going to be doing a lot of stretching and growing <laughs> during this pregnancy. I'm already like so much bigger than I was with my first and second pregnancies. Either way, I want to make sure my skin has everything it needs to grow and stretch. And so this collagen is something I try to either put in my yogurt, my tea, or um, my oatmeal every single day. Next on the list of non-negotiables is my red raspberry leaf tea. This is something that has been used for years and years, especially in other cultures, and it's used to tone the uterus, basically get it ready for contractions and having your baby. There's even been research done recently that shows that it does improve the laboring process. And so if there's anything to help my labor be quick and effective, I am gonna do it. So I drink one glass of red raspberry leaf tea every day, starting the beginning of second trimester, and as I get towards the end of the third trimester, like in the last two, three weeks of pregnancy, I'll probably start drinking at least two glasses or put two bags um, in my tea each day. While we're on the topic of skin stretching, something else that I try to do every day, especially after showers, is use some type of a belly oil. This is a Better Than Butter Belly Oil um, by Green and Lovely. This is what I have used with each of my pregnancies. Sometimes when I'm too lazy to go into the bathroom to grab this, I'll just put coconut oil on my belly, which I also use as lube. Um, in the bedroom, they both work the same. You're basically just trying to keep your skin really hydrated. So as it's stretching, which I am doing a whole lot of this pregnancy, there is lots of moisture in the skin and hopefully will prevent stretch marks and some of those other things that I really don't want to happen to my skin and belly during the pregnancy process. Another thing that changes during the second trimester is the way that you sleep. If you happen to be a stomach sleeper or a back sleeper, most likely you will not be able to do that throughout your whole second trimester. You will have to move to your side. A lot of times women like to have pillows between their knees because that makes it a lot more comfortable as well. Maybe one tucked under your belly too as you get towards the end of your second trimester. But the big thing is you don't want to sleep on your belly, which I think is pretty obvious because you are a squishing baby. And you don't want to sleep on your back because sleeping in your back can actually squish your vena cava, which is a major um, blood vessel that is getting blood and oxygen throughout your body and also throughout your babies. And so we don't want you to become dizzy or lightheaded by laying on your back with the weight of baby kind of squishing that blood vessel shut. And we also want to make sure that we're not putting baby at risk for something happening. Happening. There has actually been research showing that stillbirth is at an increased risk if you are someone that sleeps on your back. And anything I can do to help me and my baby stay safe, I am most certainly going to be doing. Let's talk about a few things that I prioritize because I am a physical therapist, not only that, but a pelvic floor physical therapist. Number one, I think exercise is super, super important. Now with each of my pregnancies, admittedly, it's looked a little bit different. With my first pregnancy during the second trimester, I could run, I was not that big, it was not a problem, it was very comfortable, for me, that's what I was used to. I loved it, that was great. With my second pregnancy, I had a 20 month old running around and I was still working um, quite a few hours a week at the hospital and so I just couldn't fit in long workouts. So basically if I could get 20 minutes in a few times a week, that was a win for me. With this pregnancy, I've really prioritized um, strength training. I try to do strength training at least three days a week and then I try to do walks a couple times a week as well. I am not going to be able to run because it's just not comfortable for me. I'm a lot bigger, a lot quicker. And I also think there are just so many benefits of strength training to keep aches and pains, your low back, pubic symphysis pain, all those things away. So if you need any help about exercising, feel free to send me a message, write a comment below because this is something that's kind of like my bread and butter and I love helping make sure people can stay active during their pregnancy. Another thing is 
as a physical therapist that I think is really, really important is preventing and managing diastasis recti. So if it's your first pregnancy, you might have no idea what that is. <laughs> it's actually where your abdominal muscles separate in order to make room for your growing belly. They just aren't connected in the front, and so the give spot is in the front, and as you get bigger and bigger, they just spread out. Uh, but we do want to do some make things to make sure that we're not causing all of our inside stuff to bulge through that gap that's being created in our ab muscles. So if you ever notice any coning, any bulging, any like triangle shape of the front of your belly, probably want to avoid that activity or modify that activity. Now, if you are worried about ab exercises and diastasis recti, that is something to be worried about. There are many exercises we don't want to do during pregnancy because they will increase your risk of diastasis recti. For one thing, laying on your back doing really high level ab stuff like scissor kicks or things where both of your legs are in the air or even doing crunches where you're really like squishing your abdominal cavity, most likely there's, those are going to make the bulge worse. But there are many ab exercises that are not going to put you at risk for making your diastasis recti worse. And if you want to know some of those ideas, feel free again to comment, send me an email, get a hold of me, and I would love to help walk you through what that could look like. Second trimester is also a great time to make sure you have your birth team put together. Now you've probably already picked out a midwife or an OBGYN. If you haven't, this video up here is going to be really great resource for you. But beyond that, you want to think about a doula. Do I want some kind of a doula there to support me during my birth? Do I want other people in the room such as family and friends? Do you want a birth photographer, a birth videographer? Like who do you want in the room with you? What are the policies at the hospital or at home? There really aren't policies. <laughs> Wherever you're giving birth, like what are the policies and who can be in the room with you? Start assembling that team, getting them all together because sometimes you do need to book these um, birth workers pretty far in advance. The other thing is your birth plan. Now, I understand that some people don't like birth plan because no birth really goes as planned, but it's really important to start looking at the ways that birth could go. Like, what are different interventions that people might face? Like epidural or um, use of forceps, episiotomy, C-section, um, even being induced for labor. Are you going to be okay with that? How late will your provider let you go? You really want to start asking people, watching birth stories, kind of finding out like what are some things that could happen during my birth. So even if you don't make a birth plan, you still have an idea of what you're okay with happening in the birth space and what you're not okay with happening in the birth space. Another pelvic floor related thing that I want you to do is start to get to know your pelvic floor. Maybe you've never really cared about your pelvic floor before or what it's doing, but there happen to be tight pelvic floors, weak pelvic floors, just right pelvic floors. I go over that in a lot more detail in this video up here. But the main thing is that if you have a weak pelvic floor, let's say you're leaking when you laugh or um, cough and things like that, we wanna make sure we're keeping your pelvic floor as strong as possible during pregnancy because you're only going to get bigger and put more and more workload on your pelvic floor. And we also wanna make sure if you have a tight pelvic floor that you're teaching your pelvic floor how to relax so that when it comes time to have your baby, you know exactly what to do to open up your pelvic floor and let your baby out. We want to be making sure your pelvic floor is ready for the birth process. While we're talking about your pelvic floor, let's go ahead and talk about sex. Things are probably going to be different in the bedroom as you get bigger and bigger. Maybe positions that you used historically are not going to work anymore. Uh, perhaps if you were laying on your back normally, or if you like to do like a missionary position, there might not be room for baby in some of those positions and you are gonna have to rethink what sex during pregnancy looks like a little bit. But also sex is a good thing, a healthy thing. There's no reason you would need to stop that during pregnancy. We just might have to modify that a little bit. Some fun things that I recommend doing this trimester are thinking about your registry because now is the time when you actually have time <laughs> to start picking out what you want in your registry and try to think about what you want your nursery to look like, what's your baby going to need and all that good stuff. Because once third trimester comes, things get a little bit more busy and hectic and who knows, your baby might come earlier than expected. Most likely you're gonna have a baby shower in your third trimester, so just get that list together so it's done. And on that note, you wanna start putting your nursery together. Now I know it seems early to think about that during second trimester, but when when it gets to the third trimester, you're kind of exhausted, you're kind of big, it's a little bit harder to move, you don't have as much energy, you're spending time really like getting your body prepped for having your baby. So I highly recommend if you have ideas about what you wanna do for your nursery that you start working on that during the second trimester and don't put it off until the third trimester. You also get to find out the gender of your baby during the second trimester if you want to or if you haven't already with genetic testing. Most of the time at the 20 week ultrasound, which 
which is where I'm actually at today. Um, you get to go and have an ultrasound done where they look at the anatomy of all your baby. And one of the anatomy parts they might want to look at is whether it's a girl or a boy. If you are interested in knowing that, you want to think about that and then decide if you're going to do some kind of a gender reveal or tell people or if you're going to keep it a secret, if you're going to pick the name in advance and all that fun stuff. Finally, if you have any aches and pains that you've been trying to ignore, you have low back pain when you work, you have pelvic pain after sex, you have lightning crotch whenever you try to exercise, anything like that going on, deal with it right away. Most likely it's not going away. Most likely it's going to get worse as you get more pregnant. Get a hold of a pelvic floor physical therapist like myself. Talk to us about what are some of the things you can do to manage that pain. Because guess what? When you go to deliver your baby, if you're not in the right alignment and that's what was causing the pain, or it's uncomfortable to be in a lot of different positions that you might need to be in during the birthing process, it's going to make things a whole lot more challenging. Those are my tips as a mom expecting her third baby. What are your tips that you've heard other moms say you have to do this during second trimester or things you've learned during your own second trimester because you've already had babies. Share them in the comments so that everyone in the community can benefit from those tips and tricks. If you are interested in learning more about your pelvic floor and how to prepare it for um, birth and labor and delivery, make sure to check out this video here. I go way in detail about whether or not you should be doing Kegels, the different types of pelvic floor, um, how to basically prepare and have a very efficient and successful birthing process. So check that video next if you haven't already. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching this video. I will see you all in the next one.